Welcome back to Just Books. Journalist turned fiction writer Kota Nilima is just out with her second novel. It's called Death of a Moneylender. It explores the intricate relationship between a young journalist who's set, sent out into the rural countryside to explore farmers' suicides. It's a fascinating story of a young protagonist named Falak from a fast-paced New Delhi newsroom who's sent into a remote outpost in southern central India to explore the death of a moneylender who's found hanging by a lamppost. And to his surprise, he discovers that uh, it's not a case of cruelty and rapaciousness on the part of the moneylender, who in fact is a very kindly man. So it's partly a whodunit. But Kota, you're also explore, exploring two, two very intricate worlds, the world of the city newsroom and the uh, plight and despair of, of uh, rural poverty and indebtedness. To what extent was it your experiences as a journalist for a long time that took you to explore this story in fiction? Uh, I think it is most of it is from my 15 years of experience in journalism. 12 of which were spent with a national newspaper in active journalism and covering of various assignments and beats. I think the young journalists uh, face a uh, face a important training in, in one way of how to deal with the pressures of the job. And as a journalist, um, we don't often get credited for this, but we are under a lot of pressure, not just of a deadline of getting the news in at the right time, but also of various kinds, both from the profession and also the subject which we cover. Now, you yourself are from Andhra Pradesh, though you've been born and brought up yes. in Delhi. But the fact of the matter is that uh, you are dealing with a uh, very benighted uh, region of, of, of India, South Central India, that region between Telangana, Vidarbha, parts of Karnataka, which has seen an enormous number of, of suicide, farmers' suicides and people falling into both moneylenders' trap and indeed the poverty trap. Uh, to what extent did your own travels and research help you uncover uh, the material in your fiction? In fact, I think the training as a journalist helps a lot here because uh, one knows what facts are. Um, uh, the, there are facts which change over a time and there are facts which don't. And the facts which don't change are like the thousands of farmer suicides for over a decade in this region, which is the Vidarbha Telangana region mainly, which is 70% cotton. And uh, nothing has helped them in these last 15 years to come out of the, the traps or the various traps in which they are stuck. One might say that the, uh, each suicide, each one of these suicides is actually symbolic of one or the other failure of our times. It's either the failure of irrigation systems which leads their fields to be flooded at one instant or drought hit the other instant, uh, poor medical facilities or you know the scientific research not reaching them in time or them not getting the right price for their produce. I think, as I said, each, each suicide I discovered was symbolic of one or the other failure and the only thing it seems to be succeeding in is pushing out the next generation of farmers out of agriculture which could have very far-reaching negative impact on the country. Right. It's a very layered and complicated situation. I mean, whether it's a government's pricing policies or or basic amenities or infrastructure like healthcare and so on that doesn't reach the very poor in these parts of India. You yourself have made uh, quite a difficult transition from being an active Delhi journalist doing beats in a large big newsroom in a daily uh, to the rather lonely self-imposed exile of a fiction writer. How and why did you choose to make this uh, jump? After about a decade of uh, reporting, I discovered that uh, truth was not always just the fact, you know. And I thought that journalism, of course, is all fact.